Now, in theory, I will say the flow of this week's Raw was better than some previous weeks. Perhaps it was. Ultimately, the flow was better in terms of it culminated in me falling fast-ass asleep on my couch very early into hour three of this show, so I had to catch it on the rebound Tuesday afternoon to actually watch the rest of the show. So if that's what we mean ultimately by the flow of the show being better, then so be it. And of course, ding-dongs like Vince Russo were enjoying what they were doing with Raw because they were basically giving you half of Raw's portion of SummerSlam on this damn card. It's like you're forsaking the show that you're charging people big-time ticket prices for this upcoming weekend to just give it away on TV. Again, why would you watch the pay-per-views? Why would you go to the pay-per-views when half of this shit is being given away on TV? Just to sit there and then turn around and do it again any damn ways. Of course, Russo would like that because that's a play straight out of the Russo playbook. And I really break this week's Raw into four categories. Stories I don't give a fuck about. Literally doing SummerSlam matches on Raw. Try to make me not care about people I like and care about. And then the story that I do care about on this Raw brand first. The stories I don't give a fuck about. I don't know whose idea it was to give us a several minute video package of Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins and a recap of their history and what's been going on the past few weeks to kick off Raw to then be followed up by an Ambrose and Rollins promo segment. But it was almost nighty night night time for me right then and there. Now, maybe the live crowd appreciated it. They got into it, and they had their mark-out moment at the end, and like, yeah, this is awesome, but the simple fact of the matter is, I haven't given a shit about either one of these two guys, Ambrose or Rollins, or quite some time, and frankly, fewer and fewer people actually do. On top of that, the whole premise of this story is so dumb. It's just so dumb to me on so many different levels. I don't trust you. I don't trust you. It's like the freaking men and women, and of course it plays out like men and women, where neither one wants to admit that the other person's got a good point. Neither person is willing to compromise. And ultimately, they start fighting about the shit to have somebody else come in and start fighting about the shit to then eventually we get to the whole point that we could have gotten to a long time before that if we wouldn't have started fighting to fucking begin with. That's a relationship in a lot of ways. So maybe in that sense, I take it back a little bit. It makes sense, but it's fucking stupid because, again, to me, it was just a gigantic waste of time just to do all this circle jerk of shit just for them to end up doing the fist bump anyways at the fucking end of the segment to get the announcement that they're wrestling Sheamus and Cesaro for the tag titles at SummerSlam. All of this exercise of futility and fuckery just to get to this point. It was a waste of time, just like doing Sasha Banks versus Nia Jax. Of course Sasha fucking won. And of course, instead of the WWE getting us out of the way, although with Bailey's injury, they kind of had to throw it together at the 11th hour, but instead of giving us a chance to establish any type of story here between Sasha and Alexa, who will actually be wrestling for the title, at SummerSlam, we have no time to build the fucking story whatsoever, even though there's apparently some real life heat between the two. And furthermore, of course we would have the fucking monster tap out again. Stop fucking doing that. And what's so ridiculous about it is we keep going back to the well with the same damn people. Can we try a different option? Because frankly, the options we've tried so far haven't been that fucking spectacular that we need to keep going to that well over and over and over again. Unbelievable. And then big ass and big slow. That's exactly what the hell this thing is. The whole premise of the shark cage to lock up Enzo Amore. Instead of typically what you would use a shark cage for is to lock up a heel associate, a heel manager that has previously interfered in the matches. Enzo Amore is getting locked up in there because he has backstage heat. So we're locking up the guy that was the victim in the whole case and locking him up without trial or anything else. What is he, a fucking black man? Unbelievable. And this whole thing now, oh my god, he hurt the big slow's hand. How is he going to be able to work at SummerSlam? Who gives a shit? Some people might have felt like Cass shined here in the promo. 
I thought maybe at the beginning he kind of initially got thrown off by the crowd reacting to him like that, and then eventually he kind of caught on and he went with it, and that was cool, and he saved it a little bit. But then here comes the club running out, which makes very little sense. And I thought they really missed an opportunity here to have the Hardys run out and make the save here as opposed to involving the Hardys in something else later on in the night because there would have been logical sense for them to run out and help, uh, especially with the involvement of the ball jobbers, the club here. But again, these are stories I don't give a fuck about. And then we get to the point where you're literally doing SummerSlam matches on Raw and Finn Balor versus Bray Wyatt. While clearly a story I don't give a fuck about and a lot of people don't care about, they're literally giving you the match for SummerSlam on Raw. And not to try to save time from knowing they have a two-hour pre-show, and then on top of that, they have a four-hour announced show for SummerSlam, knowing damn good well it might run four and a half hours, expecting us to run to 1130, almost midnight Eastern, watching this crap. I feel sorry for those of you in London that have to stay up to almost 4, 35 o'clock in the morning watching this hot garbage. So we do this match for the whole premise of seeing Finn Balor be stupid, Bray Wyatt be stupid, and then after Bray Wyatt wins because this victory means something, he's going to dump the wackest ass looking fake blood I've ever seen on top of Finn Balor. So that way later on in the night, Finn Balor can talk about, ooh, I've got demons too, and he'll see him at SummerSlam in my rematch. Finn Balor has two things. The demon paint and the entrance. At least at SummerSlam, you're going to get two of them instead of just one. You will get two. But again, the demon paint is dipshit stuff if he literally is the exact same in every way as the standard Finn Balor. And to do this match just to get to that point, to me, was dumb and again, a colossal waste of time for a story that I didn't care about. And then what's even worse, talking again about literally doing SummerSlam matches on Raw... You have the Cruiserweight Championship, Tozawa, Neville, and of course we jump the gun and do the title change here. Again, I talked about no wonder Russo would like a show like this because this is exactly the type of show that Russo would book and then people would try to run him out of damn town talking about fire Russo. WWE deserves the same type of shit for this bullshit. And can you imagine being Neville? Being the one real positive, consistent force in the Cruiserweight division, the one real reason at this point to actually have the Cruiserweight division. On top of that, taking that heel run and embracing it. And a while back, I talked about he should be the face of the Cruiserweight division, and Manuel was right. I said it should have been as a babyface. He made it work as a freaking heel. My hat's off and salute to him. But you had him sit there and job, not at the pay-per-view, but you had him do the honors on Raw where more people are fucking watching. And for what, fucking Tozawa? I'd be pissed if I was Neville. And what's even more ridiculous about this is you jumped the gun and did the damn title change and you're apparently still doing the stupid ass match fucking Sunday at SummerSlam anyways. Again, why should people watch the pay-per-view just to sit there and have it be given away immediately before or immediately after on Raw or SmackDown? Just unbelievable. I mean, did the writers head to Brooklyn early? And therefore, WWE just fucking sat there and said, hey, we got three hours of show to fill. Let's literally give the people half of SummerSlam as a preview. This is fucking ridiculous. And then trying to make me not care about people I like. I want to walk with Elias, damn it. Stop having people cut off his damn song. You're taking away the thing that gets him the most heat. So that way our truth can fucking come out and then Elias can destroy our truth and then not even break the guitar. Because again, unlike the Memphis mid-card piece of crap founder of two crappy wrestling companies, Jeff fucking Jarrett, every time Elias actually breaks a guitar, he can potentially draw a dime and not Jeff just draw a dime on a paper, but actually draw dimes in his fucking pocketbook. So, of course, he doesn't break the guitar over our truth. And, you know, it's kind of one of those things where, based off of the weekend's events, especially, you know, an hour west of here from me in Charlottesville, maybe we shouldn't have the white guy beating up the black guy. Just saying. Just throwing it out there. Uh, then Mickey James and Emma. Again, you forget that Mickey James is even on Raw, but the way they've utilized her has been so terrible. And, again squandering the return of somebody like this, like they did with RVD, like they did with the Dudleys, like they have to a degree with the Hardys. They're doing the same damn thing with Mickey James. Mickey James should be somebody that is elevating people in that women's division on Raw and or SmackDown. And again, we're not doing any of that. We're just having a random fuck-all match between her and Emma. And the only positive about this is not seeing Emma because fuck Emma. 
is seeing am I have to job. That's great. So if anything else, as long as Emma is going to be there for what reason I know not why, job her out every week, then I'll make sure that I watch this women's match segment because I enjoy the hell out of watching that bitch have to eat it and like the taste of it. Just saying. And I don't care what they try to do with the Hardys helping Jason Jordan and is this going to be a six-man tag at SummerSlam? Is this what they're doing? I don't know what the hell they're doing. Um, you're not going to get the fans behind Jason Jordan. And what's really astounding about this whole thing is why would you come up with the big thing about Kurt Angle saying that's his son and then these guys do nothing on camera together? You miss out on the opportunity to vin do vignettes of all the years they've missed. They go fishing together. They play catch together. They go to games together. They do father-son things. He, he tries... Kurt tries to teach Jason about the birds and the bees. Like, literally, there's two months of vignettes lined up right there that could incorporate the great comedic value and great comedic timing and delivery of somebody like a Kurt Angle and might potentially inject a bit of a personality, a gimmick, a shtick into a Jason Jordan that is significantly lacking one. And throwing the Hardys there with them is not going to help me care about Jason Jordan more. It's just going to make me care about the Hardys even less. Uh, and it's pretty much been on that trajectory with the Hardys ever since they came back at WrestleMania because the WWE, with the stuff with the broken gimmick and such, they don't know what the fuck to do with these guys. And it's just ridiculous. But then we cap off the night with the one story from Raw that I really do care about, which is the fatal four-way for the Universal title at SummerSlam, the main event. This feels like a big deal. This feels like a monster. And you got a bunch of monsters in this match. In a land of flippies and kickies and vanilla midgeties, at least I get to see some big badass dudes in the main event, okay? It's like the WWE's throwing me a frickin' burn here. And the segment is just fine. You know, Heyman does his thing as he always does, usually saying the same shit. I thought Joe came across strong and aggressive on the mic. Braun was no bitch. And the best thing they did with Roman is really don't, Grab a mic, don't talk, don't say anything, just go and spear Joe. It's interesting to see where they're going to go with this, and are they going to launch off into Braun and Brock down the road, and Joe and Reigns down the road? I don't really know. And even though they've done this already a couple of times with the pull-apart, break-apart fight, I'm fine with this. I had no problem with that being the way that Raw ended. Again, it's the one story I cared about, and it's the one segment I actually really, really liked on this week's show. It's unfortunate that I didn't watch it live because the flow of this show put me damn fast asleep very early into hour number three. And again, this is the Go Home Raw six days before SummerSlam. So not boding very well for the chances of me being incredibly pumped and excited for the biggest show of the season.